What is up guys, Speed here, and today we are back with another video and we're going to be going over top mid laners and specifically what are their counters. We're going to look at 10 different mid laners and what exact heroes are particularly good against them in the laning stage, in focus, and also in the overall state of the game. So first off, let's start with Shadow Fiend. Shadow Fiend is a hero that can naturally snowball to a very solid start if he's not pressured early. So a few heroes in particular are TA, Lone Druid, and Lina. TA has the natural ability to have extra damage through her refraction, which allows her to get denies against SF, as well as get on top of him in the mid to late game, which SF doesn't typically like. Lone Druid is a hero that will take a lot of practice if you want to use him as an SF counter, but understand that similar to a hero like Nature's Prophet, if you get good at controlling both the bear and the hero at the same exact time, you have a lot more damage than the SF, and more importantly, at level 5, Lone Druid gets root on his bear, which makes SF unable to lane. SF cannot show his face because you can dive him to the tier 3s, and I'm not kidding. And finally is Lina. Why is Lina good? Well, for a few reasons. You have very high attack range, so it's very easy to harass the SF. But more importantly, you have an extremely hard level 2 spike that can easily pressure out a weak SF, right? With your Fury Soul and either your LSA or Dragon Slave, you're going to be able to shred the SF and push him off the creep wave very, very easily. Not only that, you can double his wave, meaning using creep aggro and the ability to shove in the lane with your Dragon Slave or your LSA. SF's always going to be under tower, and it's going to be very hard for him to last hit, very easy for you to deny in that state, and very easy for you to just right-click him to the ends of the earth. Next up, we have Storm. Storm in particular is a mobile hero that abuses remnants to win the laning stage. So what are a few heroes that can do well against them? Well, first off, we have Ember Spirit. He's been a very common counter pick or pick against Storm Spirit for a few reasons. Storm typically kills people with an Orca timing or just the ability to get on top of them and not have them disengage, but Ember can get away from both of those. In fact, he has Chains, which is one of the best control spells in the game against Storm as it's basically instant. It is instant if he's next to you and Sleight of Fist is extremely quick. In the landing stage, you have Flame Guard to constantly shove the wave under Storm's tower, but more importantly, you use Sleight of Fist to both harass Storm and easily dodge Remnants. So if you're using the Flame Guard to get on top of Storm and you're right clicking him, he's naturally going to defensively use a Remnant. And in that case, you can use your Slide of Fist and continue pumping out damage. Next up is Dragonite. Dragonite is one of my favorite Storm counters in the game. The landing stage is solid, right? You use your Q, your Breathe Fire to reduce Storm's damage and to secure range creeps. That's the important thing. If you secure the range creeps against Storm and you potentially get your own range creep, deny you're going to be in a very solid spot to carry in storm why because you have an instant disable similar to ember spirit it is very hard for storm to fight when you're backing up your supports right if a dk is next to his supports or off laner or safe laner whoever storm wants to jump it's very hard for storm to actually do anything next up is quap why is quap good it's pretty simple you simply dagger the storm right as we said storm has to get melee range to use his static remnant to secure CS, and that's a free dagger for Quap. It's as simple as that. Quap's gonna get a lot of daggers off, and not only that, because Quap has a much earlier timing than Storm, right? Storm is somewhat strong early, but often can lack a little bit of damage or can run out of mana early. Quap, with her ultimate and maxed out dagger, is one of the strongest heroes in the early game and can really keep the tempo up and eventually even get an Orchid if needed to counter out the Storm Spirit. Next, let's go into OD. OD's a weird hero. A while ago, he was getting first phase picked because he didn't really have that many direct counters. It felt like if you tried to counter pick him, you'd kind of mess up your own game. But here are a few pub counters that I think are fantastic against OD. First off is Skyrath Mage. Skyrath Mage is great against OD because pre-BKB, you're going to be able to silence the OD, which removes all of his capabilities. It removes his offensive and defensive capabilities. But more importantly, you have one of the most dominating lading stages in the game. And an OD with a bad lading stage has to spend a long time cashing back up. And in that time, Skyrath Mage is going to be able to run over the entire enemy team or continue picking him off. And even when the OD comes out of the jungle, as we said, if you have your Atos, you Atos, you silence silence and there's nothing OD can do. Next up is Puck. This is a very traditional counter to OD. Pretty simple. Once again, you have a silence for the mid game. Dream Coil prevents OD from escaping any fights, right? Kiting in and out is what OD likes to do. And being silenced and kept in one place is what he hates. In addition, in the laning stage, you have very high attack range, which is fantastic. There's actually a few ways you can dodge Astral, right? You can use your orb to kind of jaunt around and prevent yourself from getting Astral. You can silence once he gets in range, which in the early levels is definitely possible. 
against the Astral, and you can use your phase shift to simply cancel the animation and get an extra auto attack. And finally, we have Sniper. Sniper is very, very good against OD, actually at all stages of the game, unless OD gets some really nice sheep blink BKB type of timing. But regardless, Sniper in the laning stage has high range. That's about it. It's hard for OD to Astral Sniper because of your high range. That's about it. In fact, Shrapnel and your ability to just stay out of the fights and poke OD makes it very hard for him to fight. And I want to throw in one honorable mention against OD. I recently played a Wind Ranger game against OD, and it felt very good. You have high range in the laning stage, a very good attack animation, and good base damage for lasting against OD. And finally, you have Wind Run and your ultimate to really make it very difficult for OD to fight. Next up is TA. Well, TA is... One of the best laners in the game. Uh, Secret and other pro teams are first phasing TA. They're first phasing TA, which means that it has to be at least a decent laner or else it's going to get counterpicked and dumpstered. But that's the thing. It can't really get counterpicked and dumpstered. In fact, all these heroes that I'm about to list can potentially lose to TA, except for one in my opinion. But let's get into it. First off is Clanks. Now, if TA is good at side blading, you're going to get wrecked. But otherwise, you can use your Searing Arrows to avoid drawing creep aggro and abuse your long range to simply just shred the TA. Also, in the mid and late game, you have Strafe to dodge all of her auto attacks, and your ultimate makes it very hard for TA to fight, right? You burn all of her refraction, and she doesn't have high attack speed to kill off any of the skeletons. Second is Batrider. Now, this is my personal favorite. I have a friend who's a TA spammer, and I would love to play bad against TA. In fact, I would love to crush him in particular. I'm kidding. But the thing is, Batrider with his sticky napalm and his E, it's just impossible for TA to lane. Frankly, TA can get the early last hits, but anytime you get two or three stacks, if there's a creep wave under tower, you're going to kill the TA, period. It really is that easy, so I would consider if you see an early pick TA, try to dumpster her landing stage. And not only that, Bat does very well against TA in the mid and late game as well. I mean, Lasso prevents her from hitting that hard BKB timing that makes her feel unstoppable, and Sticky Napalm makes it very hard for her to get around the fights. Not only that, you can build defensive items like Ghost Scepter and Yules without restricting your damage, which is a very hard counter to TA. And finally is Monkey King. Now, once again, Monkey King can lose this lane, but a good Monkey King can abuse the fact that TA has very low range in the early game. She's basically a melee hero. So if you kite her on the wave properly, you can get Jingu and pressure her quite hard. But you have to be careful. You are a very low armor hero and can get shredded by TA at all stages of the game. However, the one kind of exception is that Monkey, if he can get his ultimate down, has a ton of armor and it's impossible for TA to fight inside of it. Not only that, you can back up supports very easily with Wukong's command, making it a solid teamfight ability against Templar Assassin. Next up is Ember Spirit. So Ember is one of the most popular cores at the time of this recording and I expect it to stay that way for a while. So here are a few lane counters or just game counters for him. First off is Razor. Pretty simple, you static link him, you steal all of his damage, and you make it very hard for Ember to get any last hits in the mid lane. Second is Odie, using Astral, you make it once again very hard for Ember to get any amounts of last hits. You're gonna guarantee you get free farm, there's almost no way Ember can solo kill you, unless you're trash, kidding. The hero is broken, so if you get solo killed, don't feel too bad. But once again, you do pure damage, piercing through his flame guard, making it very easy to kill him, and your ultimate can basically one-shot him at some stage of the game if you build up enough int. And finally, my favorite is Morphling. Not only is the mid lane pretty good, right? You can't necessarily get zoned out by the flame guard. You can shift to strength if needed, and more importantly, you have very high damage to get a lot of the denies against the Ember in the early levels, which is great, right? It's great. But most importantly, and what I really love about this matchup is two things. You can buy Manta to purge the chains, right? You can also go BKB to purge the chains, so it's very hard for Ember to do any damage to you. But more importantly, turning into Ember feels amazing. Having a flame guard that you can use even if you're in Morphling form, and a very low cooldown slight chains is absurdly good for fighting. Like, being able to steal Searing Chains or Slight Chains is so good for mid game. Having a Morphling with his E Blade combo and a, what, three second disable, it's just insane. Next up is Lina. So how do you counter Lina? TA is a great example. I don't want to give TA for too many. I already said it against SF, but frankly, TA is such a good laner. And against Lina, with your high damage, you can just completely push Lina out of lane. Once you hit level six and have your traps, it's basically a free kill. 
However, I have seen Lina win this lane, so I mean, I guess it somewhat comes down to skill, but I would say the majority of time, if the Lina isn't pressuring TA properly, TA is going to hit level 2 refraction, even level 1, and just get as many as denies as she wants. Next up is Medusa. I love Medusa against Lina, primarily because Lina doesn't do necessarily enough damage to really pressure out the Medusa, and if Lina tries to pressure out the Medusa, you're going to use the snake on the Lina, take her mana, and make it very hard for her to continue pursuing the fights. Not only that, Medusa... Due to her stable laning stage, which is what I'd call it, stable laning stage, we'll have enough time to back up to the jungle and get to the point where Lina's burst damage just simply isn't enough. Now, of course, with cast range talents, you could be like, okay, well, Lina can cut out the Medusa. And sure, that's a valid argument. But for the majority of games, Medusa will get farm against Lina and is a decent pick. And finally is Tiny. Tiny is a very high HP hero who can deal with... A lot of the early harass from Lina in the early laning stage, but more importantly, has the ability to kill her at any stage of the game, right? With a blink, you're going to burst her with your combo, as Lina does not like to build HP items until later into the game. She likes to go for her Aetherlands, Yules, Bots, Blink, Shadowblade, all these zero HP items. More importantly, in the laning stage, with any support, the Avatoss combo or just Avatoss back into the tower is basically a kill. Next up is Windranger. We've seen a lot more play from Windranger. Specifically, Secret is picking it for Weeha, so there must be quite a bit of viability for Windranger right now, and let's talk about a few counters. So first off, there's Mars. Yes, Mars mid is actually quite good against Windranger. If you get your passive early, you don't take that much damage. You do have to be a little bit careful about power shots, but even when uh, Windranger turns on her ultimate early, if she doesn't have her Javelin yet, you're gonna take basically zero damage, which is great. It's just great. But more importantly, you can use your Arena of Mars to spear the Wind Ranger to the wall, which is great, right? It's pure magical damage, and that's wonderful against a hero that has complete physical immunity for a long duration of time. Three, four, five, six seconds, depending on the level. That's a nice counter. Next up is Shadow Demon. Yes, you could run Shadow Demon as a mid laner. I mean, you could pick it as a support as well, keep this in mind. It does work. Shadow Demon support is great against Wind Ranger because you can purge a Wind Run with your ultimate and Whoever she shekels, you can disrupt, right? Really disrupting her ability to burst anyone. But more importantly, in the mid lane, once again, you don't have to rely on physical damage to zone her out. You simply have to use your Shadow Poison. And because Wind Ranger does not have a good way of sustaining the lane, the Shadow Poison is going to force her out very early. And as I said before, if you hit your ultimate, especially before Wind Ranger does, you have extremely heavy kill threat potential on the Wind Ranger. And finally, we have Leshrac. Now, Leshrac has to be careful against Wind Ranger because with one Shackle Shot and Focus Fire, you can die. But it goes both ways, right? A Yule's combo on Wind Ranger is also going to kill her because Wind Ranger does not have enough HP to survive that before BKB. Also, Leshrac, it's very easy for him to dodge power shots in the landing stage. You have very high movement speed and you have your E, your Lightning Storm, to secure any CS needed. Next up, we have Invoker. Now, Invoker has gotten some laning buffs. He got one armor recently. Clap it up for Invoker. Very excited for him. But a few heroes in particular that I think kind of just beat Invoker in every stage of the game are Naga, Beastmaster, and Alchemist. Now, you can kind of see a theme between all these. They're very good at getting on top of people or just farming in general, right? Naga, Beast, and Alk all have giga farm potential. More importantly, Naga and Beast have units in the early game, which make it very easy to deny against Invoker. Invoker can't harass you out early, like period. It, it, the hero doesn't do enough damage to stout shield heroes within the early game. Sure, after it builds up a couple levels, maybe, yeah, with the sun strike and the meteor, it can. It can clear Naga illusions as well, but the thing is, if a Naga has even a decent landing stage by getting denies with her illusions, she's going to farm double the pace of the Invoker, just because of the natural state of the hero, right? That, that's how Naga works, you farm faster. So if you build up enough items, you get your Defusal Mental Heart before the Invoker gets even two items, the game is just easy, right? The game is just easy. Next up is Beastmaster. This is a mid laner that I'm personally a fan of. I've <laughs> played it a bit. Uh, not too much in rank, to be frank, but the power of Beastmaster is, once again, his ability to farm. Right? This might sound crazy, but at level 10, you have an experienced talent, um, experienced gain. And when you hit this point, you can rip through the jungle. Like, I mean rip through the jungle. You can hit level 17 at, like, the 17-minute mark. You're basically Meepo. It's pretty crazy. Not only that, when you hit your Roar, you have immense amounts of kill potential on the Invoker. He basically can't show his face, especially if you have a support in the area. It's the easiest kill of your life. It really is that simple. With your eye damaging in the early game, also, you're gonna get most of the denies if you're good at last hitting, right? Super high damage. You have the Inner Beast, which is gonna constantly push in the wave towards the Invoker's Tower, 
and Invoker doesn't want to have to last hit in our tower. And finally is Alchemist. Now, Al can lose lane to Invoker. I understand that. Al can lose lane. If you don't buy enough Sal's, you're not comfortable with creep aggro, and maybe you're just not good at last hitting. The Invoker will get to the point where he can even solo kill you. But, similar to Naga and Beast, you can get away with the laning stage. You can buy a Stout Shield, you can use the Acid Spray to zone him out. More importantly, you're just gonna outfarm Invoker. Like, by the time Invoker hits his Ags, you can easily have Manta Radiance. Like, easily. If you watch any sort of elk video, get down the farming patterns, buy enough salves, use creep aggro, properly position your acid spray, the game's gonna be simple. You simply blink, stun the invoker, and there's nothing you can do. Next up is Tinker. Now Tinker's a weird hero, it's not really that popular right now, but I know there's a lot of niche Tinker pickers, so here's a few counters. First off is Timber Saw. I'm personally a big fan of Timber against Tinker, and this might sound weird, right? Like, how does Timber do well against Tinker? Now, there's a few reasons. Um, I, once again, I, I do want to state that this goes both ways. A pure damage laser is good against Timber. Not only that, magical damage is also good if Timber doesn't have a hood. So, there's a lot of viability in picking Tinker against Timber. But the thing is, with the reactive armor, you can dive the Tinker very easily. Even if you use this March, it's definitely possible. By the time Tinker gets March, which is typically around level 5 is when he starts getting it. Maybe not against Timber if they're aware of this. But by that time, you're going to be able to dive the tower and put a lot of pressure. I've dumpstered a lot of Tinkers. As timber and I'm confident to say that you can win this landing stage hard you can secure every CS with your Q right even when you're laser it's extremely easy to get the last hits with your Q so once again that is completely nullified and of course when Tinker's blinking around in the trees, you can use your Chalkworm to cut them down. That's wonderful. Next up is Zeus. This is the very common, right? I mean, Zeus has always been picked as a Tinker counter. It doesn't necessarily actually crush Tinker in lane. Um, however, similar to Timber, you can use your Q to secure CS even when you're lasered, and you provide vision to counter out the Tinker throughout the game. That's kind of the premise of it, right? You make it very easy to find the Tinker. That's about it. And finally is Brood. Right, like, you have webs and you have spiders. Tinker can't kill the spiders. Even if he has March, it's very easy to dodge it and then take his towers. You farm exponentially faster than Tinker. Not only that, with a few properly placed webs, you can easily invade his jungle and make Tinker's game just a living hell. And finally, the last hero of this list. I know it's been a while, guys. Thank you for staying with me. But the final hero is Quop. right? Quop is a very, very strong laner. In fact, I, I don't think many people know a single Quop counter. But here's a few that I think do pretty well. Um, as a side note, I think Ever does okay. Just keep that in mind, guys. But first off is Legion. Yes, Legion mid is very good against Quop. You can buy a Stout Shield, meaning Quop's right clicks don't do that much damage. And more importantly, you can purge Quop's daggers reliably, right? Even when she hits level 3 dagger, right, which is level 5, you can still purge it. No problem. With your W, right? Press the attack is simply a very good counter to Quop in lane. It's as easy as that. Not only that, if you get a Blade Mail, you reflect all of Quop's damage at some point in the game, which is a ton. Quop can't really afford that. Even if you don't need that, if you get an Armlet and a Shadow Blade, if you're one of those type of guys, which I'm actually fond of, you can easily solo kill Quop. Right, Quop doesn't have that much HP, so he typically buys Yules as his offensive item, and that's not so good against Legion. So you have a good laning stage, right? You can easily outsustain Quop, which is crazy. Not many heroes can do that. And you have great solo kill potential in Quop throughout the game. And finally, yes, I hate to do this, but I'm wrapping up the video saying TA. Now that's kind of weird, right? Why have TA dagger gets dagger? Well, keep in mind, first off, in your pubs, Quops won't have sentries, meaning you can meld dodge every single dagger. It's not so hard. Basically, you use meld when the dagger is coming, and you can dodge it. So, that's one way to counter Quop in lane. Not only that, Quop doesn't necessarily have that good of damage, meaning using Refraction, you're gonna get a lot of denies. And, similar to the other heroes, like Legion and Chaos Knight, if Quop shows your face, you blink on her, you use your Deso, your Meld Strike, with your Refraction damage, and Quop's gonna have almost no HP left. It's just very hard for Quop. Especially in mid-game fights where it's not so easy for Quop to just casually get a dagger on TA, all of Quop's damage is gonna get negated by Refraction, right? So, no dagger means TA wins that matchup. Well, thank you guys for watching this mid-counters video. No, it might have been a little bit long, but regardless, I appreciate it. Hopefully, this helps you out in your mid-games. You can counterpick a few of these heroes and start experimenting. Because, to be honest, if you pick a counter, it doesn't necessarily mean you just automatically win the lane. You have to have good mechanics. You have to understand why exactly they beat them in lane. And hopefully, I gave you a little bit of insight on that, and you can apply it in your games and dumpster some SF Storms, ODs, TAs, Embers, Linas, Wind Rangers, Invokers, Tinkers, Zeus's, that's not Zeus, and Quops. Hopefully, you can do that. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Hey guys, before I leave you, I just want to remind you that over at GameLeap.com, you can check out guides just like this one, made by top-tier pros. It will help you gain MMR faster, it will help you learn the game much more in-depth, 
and overall just increase the experience of your Dota gameplay as you will crush your opponents simply by knowing more than them. Let's <laughs> go.